What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over Greggy Show. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hi. How you doing? I'm well. Does it feel like the old days, wearing the headphones? Kevin's off at some dumb wedding. It does. I'm just going to monitor for a few minutes and then just throw them on the ground and step Don't on. know. that We just bought new headphones. Gonna, so it's, that... it's not a wedding. It's a sexy birthday rendezvous. It's you just you told me there was a wedding today. He told me he was at a wedding. Mm-mm. Is he getting married? No. What's the corpse's name? Anyways. Paula. <laughs> <laughs> so what? She, wow. Paula took him away for his birthday? Yeah. Where'd they go? Um, they Some weird safari thing. That doesn't sound sexy. Yeah, I saw him at a zoo or something. Sounds such. like malaria. Yeah. Malaria. It sounds fun, though. From safari? the far I talked to him, oh, yeah. it sounded good. I heard an elephant in the background. You did like, not hear an elephant in the background. An I did not. Over but, there, the pier went Tim Gettys. Hello. Over here, Pride of Long Island, Colin Moriarty. Good to be here with you today. Petting Portillo's head. This little son of a bitch. He's getting old. He is. He's getting all gray. Yep. And dumb. No, he's always been dumb, I guess. He's always been dumb. Yeah, that's, not, that's no change. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Tired. I'm feeling good. Yeah? Yeah. We're coming off MomoCon. Mm-hmm. Thank you to everybody who came out to MomoCon, came to see us at our yes, panels, thank you hung for out with us, came for to For all of you asking out there, Momo is Japanese for peach. And peach is a big deal. The official in Georgia. fruit of Georgia, Georgia, which is where MomoCon was. Right. Oh, so honey, problem about progress in peaches. No, what they also explained it. to me was that peach is synonymous uh-huh. with anime. And, and I like, why, why do you say it that anime. way? Anime. 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 Uh, now, what peaches and anime have to do with each other? I have no idea. I don't know why. Why would they call it? They're essentially calling it peach con, they're which doing makes a, sense if it's a farmer's market. No, I think it's I think it's cute. They're doing it because Georgia's well known for its peaches. This is a right. Japanese centric thing, and so they're just saying it's MomoCon. Like it's 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 implied. You know, right? The thing is, is that most people that even go to MomoCon have no idea that it means peach, right? Mm-hmm. Including me. I didn't know that until a few days before we even went. Mm-hmm. It has peach in the. Uh, uh, Official logo. logo, yeah, from Ocon. It's all, it's all. Once you see it, it's like the FedEx area. You can't unsee it. I just, I'm, I'm one of those guys that likes names that are incredibly descriptive. Hold so on. like Comic Is Con, it like the FedEx thing, Greg. Just like the FedEx. Or thing. are they just very clear peaches? <laughs> well, no, it's not like it's just one. You're instead of seeing the arrow, you're seeing the peach in Momo. You always see the peach as a peach, but it's when you know Momo means peach, the logo takes on a whole new meaning. I guess so. Just like when you understand arrow means arrow. FedEx means different God, things. Okay, now you finally won me over with that. I still think he's Greg. wrong. Let me, ask you, think he's let me wrong. ask you an unrelated question, Greg. Sure. When you pick, I always notice you pick up Portillo with authority. You pick up Portillo as if you've done it once or twice. Yeah, once or twice. Does he fit in your hand in a very specific way? Yeah, rib cage right, rib cage right in the center of. The but palm. so like one on, yeah, so like you always can pick him up in the right way. So you always right. see him real quick. <laughs> you'll, now you gotta always support his butt because he's got the back. You know, you're like when I'm picking him up, he just starts. He's he's a little more penguiny. Yeah, he gets a little. And you're not giving him. The, you're not giving him the support he's used oh, to. Oh, that's fantastic! Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. He knows. He knows you have the untrained hand. The, un, that's the unskilled rapping. hand. Yeah. Then see, he's struggling there, and now he's calm again. You do that. You bring him close to your body. You get. You get him right on the rib cage right Portillo, there. Portillo, you're a little just chill. Bitch. You just chill. <laughs> I also like that when you he Greg hands Portillo to you. Portillo immediately starts doing the mouth noise. That you love. I know he you love. No, it. he's. Imp- it's, I feel like he looks you right in the eye. When he I feel it. like we're bigger adversaries than ever. Then yeah, but also it's mutual. <laughs> you know? We sure. have an unspoken love for each other, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. As pictures have proven on the internet. Sure. But um the animosity's real mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. No, I mm-hmm. can feel it. Yeah. You're you're like two Super Bowl quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You respect each other. Mm-hmm. And in the off season you might like each other. But when you're on the field, when you're on the gridiron, right. Mm-hmm. All bets are off. Now, here's the funny thing. It didn't derail. So no, you were waiting good. for it. it was here, here was the thing I was thinking about before. Is that I mean, it didn't make much sense. Like, no, why, is nothing the, does. Is, are the quarterbacks all on the field? It's like LA all and Montana bets are off. were famously really good. But what is all friends. bets are off? They, they're not like trying they're to hit each gonna, other. No, but they're not going to They're not gonna throw like, interceptions on purpose. Well, no, yeah. They're not going like, to go easy on each other. I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to play this game as hard as humanly possible. I don't care if my best friend's playing against me, is basically what's happening. Okay. I think it makes sense. I think you're analyzing it too much. I think it makes more sense than you like more like Michael Strahan versus Brett. Brett Favre, and there's sure. when they go out there, it's just you know all the classic matchup. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna. It say makes more sense than when you were Strahan like this. B- broke the sack record, sacking him. But you remember this? It was totally like a fucking fake thing where Brett Favre yeah, told Brett them played. to let him through, and then he fell down like it's stupid. Yeah, it was it was not. You don't deserve it, Michael Strahan. <laughs> um, but here's the thing I was thinking about too with Portillo. I've known for a while, but it was brought up to me a, a, not too long ago that Portillo used to bite Christine when she first moved in with you a couple times. Yeah, not savagely either. Uh, I mean. Let's be clear. I don't think that's possible or for that thing savage. to savagely oh, yeah. do anything. Or he could well, you've seen, him, you've, seen him, you've seen him set on a toy, but nonetheless, I was thinking about 
So he did that because he was used to being, you know, alone with you. Number one, right? yeah. And then Christine would obviously be sleeping in your bed, and he would be kind of cast off. Sure. Jealousy. Now, what Attention. I've always found about this, and, and why I think that I'm Portillo's second favorite mm -hmm. in, in the world, is because sure. Portillo's never bitten me. Now, I've not I've not slept often with Greg in the same bed. It's mm -hmm. not to say I've mm -hmm. never slept mm -hmm. in the same bed as Greg. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. We wouldn't say but, anything crazy. But when Portillo and Greg moved in here in 2011, Portillo's never once snapped at me or barked at me or gotten mad at me at all. So I feel like I have the advantage right now in Portillo's heart and mind. Heart, right here. Mind, right here. <laughs> and I feel like... I doubt it. I feel like there's something to be said about I it. I think him and Steimer buried their... I was going to say bridges. That doesn't make any sense. They buried the bridges. They mended they their did. bridges quite some time ago. The point is I had no bridges to mend. Sure. You see. But he hears you yell at him. He doesn't know. You send him to bed every so often. Just for fun sometimes. Him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't like, even know if he's good or bad. Let's go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> Greg. Let's be honest. He has when you go send him to bed. He doesn't know he's being bad. Nah, I know he's stupid. It's not that he's necessarily stupid. It's that you never trained him. Not nah, trained him. So to he bed. just goes to bed. He, he puts his ears down. He, he knows, he, knows he did something off. wrong. He knows he did something so wrong. So like at any mo moment in time, I can just tell him to go to bed, and it's and he's fine. He usually doesn't believe you though. No, he doesn't. But then he knows when I'm getting stern. I I, I look at him. Like what's funny is that he does the roll over things sometimes with you. Like, where he, he won't move. Where he really doesn't want to but go But, like, I only have to look at him to make him do that. Like, where I'll tell him something, and he'll just ignore it, and then I'll look at him, and he'll, like, roll over. Because yeah. he knows that, like, Submissive. I'm coming at him. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just push him down, down the, the hallway, hall yeah, yeah, yeah. until he gets on his feet. And then he'll run down the hall. And he has such thing, Greg calls it a, a tractor trailer out of control, where, like, he's going, and then he'll just turn this way and keep going. His hind so he's, like, walking kind of sideways, side. side. just kind of, like... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a weird. He's too long. He doesn't know what's going on weird back there. Creature. It is. It is the length issue. I yeah. think, and, yeah. and also juxtaposed to the short uh, stature of his legs. Yeah, mm. I feel very. Um, I sympathize with him. I got short legs, long torso. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, dog. So I'm just. I'm just necessarily. I'm just calling it. You know, Portillo and I might not have a lot of time to bond, but Portillo and I have an unspoken bond, and it never, never went astray. He it, never bit me. <laughs> Sure. He was a younger, right. wilder dog okay. back in his day, I think is the big thing. But you make a good point because you're both my bitch. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this is the Game Over Greggy Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather around this table. Each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement. That was real good. I need to rely on you because I, I couldn't do it and hold the why, dog. Why are you holding the mic? This is the problem, and I love the dog. But when he wants to be on the show, I cross so my needy. legs, and then I sit way off the mic. And so then if I come up to the mic... He doesn't have enough room to sit because I got this gut that blocks him out. Let me be clear. Yeah. He doesn't want to be on the show because he doesn't know anything's happening right now. No, he wants you to be on my lap. on your lap all the time so that he j that's just <laughs> that's his natural place. He also knows to shine. He knows to shine in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. You've seen him look at the camera. Don't act like that's that's something that yeah, his. Something you said about... you say I haven't trained Portillo. I've trained him to be a camera hog. He knows what's up. Yeah. You put a camera on this dog at any time, he knows it. Yeah, he knows it right now. Well, right now, he's just, uh, he knows, I mean, if we needed to put him out there. What I've been thinking about doing is bringing his dog bed in here, putting it on the center of the table, and just leaving him in the center of the table at all times. He could be the new centerpiece. That's I fine. like that until he, like, he smells better than that. Accidentally traps or something. <laughs> tumbles to his bed. I mean, he's not going to move in the middle of the show. I, mean, I, I can hold him this way the entire time. Yeah, but you're holding him. Yeah. If he's just of his free volition. We would have a good five seconds of him getting up and getting ready to move before something bad would happen. What we would need is have you guys seen the movie Gladiator? And yeah, they put Russell him Crow. in the middle, and then they put the four tigers in the side of him, so he can't go anywhere, and he has to fight the guy. We'd need some sort of system in place like that for me to be okay with him being in the middle of the table. I mean, are we I'm the tigers in this? Do we have? There, is there such a thing as a mini tiger? We'll get four cats, and we'll tether them to the sides. <laughs> and then, we'll bring Chloe back. Yeah, Chloe will fuck him up. Like Each bringing to. a random topic of conversation for your amusement. If you like that, go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny and toss us a few bucks. But if you don't have any money to give us, no big deal. Wait until next week, because Monday through Thursday we break the show up topic by topic, day by day, and post it on youtube.com slash kindoffunny before we post the entire thing for free Friday on youtube.com slash kindoffunny and podcast services around the world. Greg, the world. do you think Portillo ever thinks of Chloe and remembers no. her? No. no. And the Do you? I don't know. See, this is the thing I was telling you about. When Chloe lived here, Chloe the cat, which was Mike Mitchell's cat, I loved her very much. She would always be in my room. She was in my room all the time because uh, Mike wasn't here a lot, and I used to like really take care of her. And she would be at the sliding door, and she would just sit in between the sliding door and the curtain and look outside all the time. Mm -hmm. And she, there's a cat that lives across the way yeah. that I've named Frederick. I named him Frederick a long time ago. Fuck I don't know what his up. actual name is. He's up. like a ratty looking like black and brown he, cat. He's he looks like that. He looks like 
alternate universe garbage pail Heathcliff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And he would like come out of saunter out of the house that he's from and like kind of walk around the bar- the. The backyard, and then eventually he realized that Chloe was always at the window, and so they would actually sit, like together, like separated by a window, and just sit there for hours. And I have like all this film of them doing this and like pictures. It's so funny. Each thinking and, the other was in prison. Mm. And um, so eventually, Chloe left, and Frederick. I see him once in a while, like roaming around. But I have a white stuffed cat, mm-hmm. and I, after about eighteen months, it's a white. It's it's Rolo from Tales of Exilia too. And I and and Cheryl actually had the great idea, and I so I put she's like put the cat at the window and see if Frederick comes and thinks it's Chloe. And this was like eighteen months after like he had last seen and had an yeah. interaction with Chloe. And I did it, and he came. <laughs> Isn't that fucking weird? Did so he, he mourn? Did he just, he just brought her fishes and stuff and just mourn? And it was cry. so weird. There was a time where I used to leave my sliding door open sometime, and like one of them cut through the the this the uh, like the screen. Screen, yeah. To either get in or out. I don't know. Like, no what happened. Shit. Yeah. Which one do you think it was? It was probably Chloe cutting to get out. You think so? Yeah, because Chloe Chloe got out a couple of times and then she freaked out and like just ran back in. She like never tried to like run away because she was fat and lazy. But um, <laughs> so I always thought that was funny that Frederick because Frederick would come around every once in a while and just hang out and like think and then eventually stopped coming. Yeah. Like realizing that she was gone. It but then when much. I put from afar, he saw like a white apparition in the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. And so it was, and so he came up, and he was very disappointed when he realized it was a stuffed animal of Rolo from Tales of Exilia too. And so, mm. and so that's how that story goes. So I feel like Portillo might have nightmares every once in a while of Chloe just batting him right in his fucking face, like he, like she used to. That's pretty even. I'm, uh, there's video proof of him chasing her down the hallway that one time. Yeah, that but he never time. attacked her. He like, he couldn't damage her. You know, she's way too fast, and that's just the nature. But I I saw her several times. Just oh yeah, she fucking beat him. him. She bat him. You know. <laughs> We're gonna do that thing and run away. Tim, what's your topic? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me it's not Portillo. Chloe it, is, it is not Portillo. So we're coming up on my favorite week of the year, E3. Ah, so here's the thing. Nick's reaction right there upsets me. I don't like that one bit. We've been working at IGN for a long time. Now we're not, but for a long time we were there, right? Yeah. And there's this like kind of sentiment among a lot of people that have been working in the industry for a long time they're like oh t3 oh i hate this this is the worst week ever uh, i don't i want this to be over are you guys fucking crazy no we're 100 saying you're the crazy one no no i remember being a little kid and wanting nothing more than for it to be june mm. because it's my birthday at the end of june but sure. also because i knew that i was about to know all the games that i was going to buy in november and I was so excited about that. Sure. E3 is you start You start thinking about what they're going to announce. You start making predictions. You start talking to your friends about it. You just get fucking hyped. And then all of a sudden, Japanese dudes come out and freaking play Santa Claus and start throwing gifts at you, right? Right. It's the fucking best. That's that's what E3 is, sure. right? Yeah. So, uh, what, Nick? Uh, I He already wants to start poking holes in your thing. You're no, okay, I'll, I'll wait for you to finish your topic before, or your what the full topic is before I start lambasting you oh god i mean my topic is just e3 in general yeah like do you still feel that magic that you once I did see my thing is i never really felt the magic because e3 is always synonymous in my head with working ridiculously hard for very little in return um my first year of e3 i don't think we slept for the first couple days and i don't know why we did that other than that's how we thought that's how you're supposed to cover a show um I always equate it to I always dread E three until we get to it because I was uh, I was actually talking to Neha this morning from over GameSpot, at GameSpot. We're with GameSpot, um, we're GameSpot. Working... GameSpot.com slash E three dash kind of funny kind of funny dash E three I'll look it up. Oh, I think you'll be able to just go to GameSpot.com during E three. Well, yeah, I'm talking about right now. See our little funny video. Oh, fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Neha and I were kind of we're tired. I mean, obviously, we're both tired for different reasons. She's been dealing with it on a much bigger scale because she's the director of video over there and has to kind of coordinate everything. But we we're talking today, and she's like. She's like, I don't know. I just kind of look to June 20th when I'm just not there anymore and I could just sit by a pool and have a cocktail and relax. And uh, I, I think we both kind of agreed that the lead up to E3 is, is the stressful part. Exactly. During the show, I always have a blast. I'll be honest with you. Because like when I used to do the pre and post show with uh, with Greg and Colin and yeah, I think yeah, you were – I don't know if you were I've part of that. I've done a bunch of random stuff. Yeah. You, you used to kind of be around kind of segment producing for us. You wore a nice suit last year. It was – I did. Yeah, like the getting the sets together and getting all the branding and the sponsorship stuff together. It was, it was like you have to do it, but it's a pain in the ass because you're like, you know, they want – you just have to track down so many different details and you're, you're working with so many different moving parts. Whereas when the show's going and you can't really change any of the big things, you're like, well, we can't really change the set because the set's here and we're all on top of it. So great. That's off the list. Um, you get a much better sense of like uh, – uh, 
energy and excitement, right? Because like, oh, we're going to do a live show. It's going to be fun. And this is like a lot of eyes are on this. And it means a lot to a lot of people, which is the most important thing. Um, same with Comic-Con where you're like, we're, we're mounting this big production. We're a part of this cultural thing that's happening, this big zeitgeist that's happening right now. And it means something to people, which is great. But everything up until that point is like torture, is mental torture. That's the thing. I think you're talk. I, I love E3. I still enjoy E3. I feel the magic of E3. The thing about E3, though, and I understand the people who are not jaded, but who are like, oh, I don't, I'm not into this, is the fact that from a consumer, it's just Christmas. But yeah. for everybody else, it's you're at the base of the mountain looking up to the peak. Like, I got a long way to go. You know what I mean? Like, setting up this schedule out there, let alone doing our normal jobs in this show and helping Nick set up the room. And it's like, I start to answer an email and leave, and now there's 15, and now two people are competing for the same time slot. And it's like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing of all the gr- the gears grinding against each other of mm-hmm. like, ah. And then you get there, and it's fun. Yeah, and it's great, but there is that... I'm on stage and I'm doing this and is the next guest here yet? And if they aren't, why aren't they here? And what are we going to do? And da da da. And I got to remember, I'm still on for this person. Do, 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 do. There's so many different things there. Yeah. I love E3. Good. Um, no, I, I mean, this is the first E3 in a long time that I was at, at, at all exciting, looking forward to going. Like when June came around, typically I was like, fuck. Because I really, E3 is tough and I don't, I get why people are excited. I used to be excited too when I'd watch it from afar. But when I went to my first one in 2004, um, you know, I, I quickly learned that it was um, not fun. And really, all of the fun for me, it, like a, 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 in going to the show and absorbing the show, even as a consumer, even though I'm not really, I guess, a consumer anymore, I'm just in media or whatever the fuck it is we do, but personality. Personality, but is the press conferences. Yep. The press conferences are all that matter. And they all happen. Within 24 hours, and then there's just three more days of fucking hell. Yeah, I mean that was that was basically, like it all. It's all front loaded before the show even ha- happens. The coolest shit happens. It's not like E3 happens and then the best part happens. It's E3 happens and then it just gets worse and worse. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so you know that's the one thing that I like to keep in mind. I, as someone who doesn't really like being around crowds and doesn't really like absorbing things and nerd culture in that way of going to conventions and stuff that's not really like my style i l- would love to live in an era like we do now or have lived in an era like we do now where you could watch the press conference and mm-hmm. stuff like that because oh, back sure. in the day yeah, yeah. as i don't know a lot of a lot of people remember in 2000 2001 1999 98 whatever you'd have to wait and fucking refresh you know yeah. a website and wait for people like news to pop up and that's not the way it happens anymore so e3 is most fun to watch now from home mm-hmm. being I, I am so confused why a normal person would want to go to this place because a you're not you're not going to get in any of the press conferences if you're not in the media and b then you get to go on a show floor and play a bunch of games and if you don't have press passes or appointments like we do like we did at IGN then you're going to wait in line you're going to play three or four games maybe of any then, consequence a day and then you're going to have to leave and I understand why people are excited about that but to me I always tried to put it towards other people as like listen like we're doing this so you don't have to so stay as far away from it as possible because <laughs> because like we'll go through this for you and we'll let you know what we think and at least mm-hmm. you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole of. You I know. understand that, but That's I think it's just take. I think it's just that we've gotten to live the other side of the equation. You know what I mean? If we are on the outside going to, e- I, I always talk about it at PAX. When I talk to people at PAX at a meet and greet, and be like, "Oh man, what oh, did you see today? What did you do? Well, we waited in line three hours to watch this fifteen minute demo." I'm like, "Are you fucking crazy? Yeah, what the fuck? Are you fucking crazy?" And the, but that's the experience. They're there for that game. You know, what mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing of like they're going there to see Uncharted Four just to see it, yeah. to be one of the first thousand people that see it and but, get to see it. But here's the thing. Shit. Here's the thing, Greg, is that, and for really for everyone, is I understand as Tim was alluding to that it sounds and is jaded. Right to say something like that, but I'm unapologetic about it because I did it for this is my ninth E3, and I'm and, and I I did it for so long and so many times that I just know that it's not like covering it from that standpoint doesn't change. It doesn't get easier. It it, it stays exactly the same. It's hard, and you work all day and all night to write this stuff. And you do it and you just kill yourself. And so I understand that the, the zeitgeist of being there is fun and being there is fun for people and playing games is fun. But when you have to work the show, it's a different beast entirely, which is why, frankly, I'm so excited about this E3 because we get to just go and do our show. I mean, a lot of pre-planning that we're going and you know, a lot of planning going into it, but we're there you know, from nine to five or whatever. And then we, it, we're done because that's not the way it was. You know, like when you cover the game, when you cover games there, it's, you have appointments from nine to five and then you're up until three in the morning writing about them. And then you do it, you get up at seven and then you do it again over and over again. So I understand why people get upset when they say like, well, I'd kill to be at E3. And I understand that, but understand that our perspective is somewhat unique in the sense that we've done this. And I'm telling you, if you have to work the show, it is not fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyone in the industry, anyone, that writes previews and sees games there that likes doing it. I've never met one person. 
<laughs> so, like, that's just that's just the reality of the situation. If you can just go and have fun and enjoy, yeah, that's different. But that's never been the way I've experienced either. So that's that's why I understand why it comes off as jaded. But mm-hmm. but I am unapolog- unapologetically jaded because that has been my experience. That's just the truth. I had one E3 that way. My first E3 was actually, like, I won a contest to go to E3, and that was, like, fucking mind-blowing, because up until that point, I was just, like, I'm sure millions of people out there are one of those kids that's just, like, my dream is to go to E3. I want to be there. I've, for years, read the magazines and heard about the three-hour wait to play whatever game it was, you know, like, uh, Brawl or all that stuff, and I wanted that so badly, and then... Then when, once you get there, there was like, I'm not going to fucking wait in line to play this goddamn game. Like, I'll, I'll watch it. That's cool. You know, but I, like Greg was saying, I don't understand the people that go and, and want that, but they do, obviously. And there's a, lot, a huge crowd for that. But I remember being there, actually being there that first year and instantly being like, oh, fuck. The thing that I like the most about E3, I'm not even getting because I'm here. I couldn't go. Well, I couldn't watch the press conferences because I had to wait in line to get in. You know, and I mm-hmm. like I we actually got to go to the PlayStation um, conference that year. So yeah. the year Kevin Butler came out. That was fucking oh, wow. awesome. Like that was a memory I'll always have of me and Alfredo going there and being in the press conference and being like, "Holy shit, this is amazing!" But that meant I didn't get to see Nintendo's press conference. That broke my heart. You know, it's you didn't like, miss how, much. That, yeah, yeah, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good year that year. But but still, and I missed like the reveal of Donkey Kong Country Returns sure. and stuff like that. And like that's the shit that I live for. Like I wanted to see that. So then I, I kind of got out of the press conference and I had to like wrap, like get on my phone and try to keep refreshing and figure out all the things that happened. And then you just go to the show floor and it's just fucking, it's a disaster. There's just right. games and people and all this shit. There's just too much and it's hard to like actually understand where should I go and what I'm supposed to do. By day two, I was done with it. It's like, this is awesome. This is a spectacle and it's great, but whatever, yeah. you know? And then, then I moved Like I got my job at IGN actually because of that trip to E3 when I went to the IGN booth and talked to people. But then I've been at IGN. This is now going to be my 63. And it's like, I can never go to the show floor again and I'd be totally fine. Like, yeah, that's all fine. I'm with you with the press conferences. I wish there was a way I could actually be in the room for all the press conferences, but that's impossible. If you go yeah, to Sony's, like, you can't go to Microsoft. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's the, it's there the are some people that try. Like, I remember Fran used to like, I think one year Fran actually they have did shuttles get and stuff, in, was yeah. able to make it to all of them. But you have to really want that. Like to be in that room when mm-hmm. that's happening, and also I mean there is I've sat in many press conference uh, filming them or doing doing direct feed for them and things like that. It is fun. It's that that There's sense an energy of to that live showmanship event. and energy, right? Like especially since now we've all been in um, uh, the industry long enough to have seen uh, both consoles come out for the last two generations, right? So like. Dude, the hype of like seeing the PlayStation 4 or seeing the Xbox One and like that whole, I mean, it really is. You talk about like presidential elections and how that is some people's Super Bowls. Well, like, you know, in the video game industry, that is a lot of like people love being caught up in that in that race between the, the, the three mm-hmm. uh, major consoles, right? And then like seeing what Microsoft would do and then Sony always having like going last and, and yeah. like making that impression, yeah. right? And like that whole debacle was it last year or the year before when Microsoft was like, uh, always on and we're just gonna just deal with it or whatever and everyone's like what and then Tony's like well you know you could tell they called an audible a little bit and changed some wording just to kind of slam Microsoft one more time and mm-hmm. you're like yeah I, I mean depending on which side you come down on you like score one for the good guys or boo you know um, so there is that energy too but it was also cool it was a unique experience watching it on the last time we did it at, at IGN because they had that beautiful stage and people could come and sit and watch it on a 60, 60 inch TV not be bothered not have to deal with the crowds we watched every single one of them you could relax, get food. That is an experience too. And so in that in that regard, like I I do I think that everyone should experience it once, and then once you do, you'll be you'll be very, very uh appreciative of being able to watch the streams from the comfort of your own home. Yeah. And not need to deal with the crowd. Because you're right, like it's you don't get to play as many games as you want. Um and even if you do, you gotta wait forever to do it. You know, there's always mm-hmm. that like third day though when you're like, all right, I'm gonna go roll on the show floor and like screw yeah. around. That's yeah, always it, fun. it thins out a little bit by the third day too. I remember so Alfredo every year would come over to my house and we'd just sit in my room and just watch the conferences and just be like freaking out over everything, even the stuff that we didn't really care too much about. Like we'd even watch all the third party conferences and all that stuff that even back then they didn't show that much. You know, um, so like, yeah, still do a conference. Are they still doing a conference. Yeah, yeah, they always right? do right. 
Um, yeah, EA will do one and UB will do one. Yeah. So well, it's Konami used to do one, form, right? Right, because hmm? they'll be showing stuff. Did, did Konami used to do something. Konami they used, used to, to yeah, yeah. It's a, like a joke what they used to do. It was awful. Yeah. It was like an hour long. You're like, ah. And then this year, Square Enix is jumping in and Bethesda is jumping in. So there's there's lots of... Um, a lot, of, a lot of third party yeah. conferences. But I think that overall, my best E3 experience has always been the recent years of IGN, where we're all in one room watching it together. Everyone's reacting. Mm. Like, that, was, that was just like the memories of me and Alfredo times a thousand. Because yeah, these yeah. are the people that give a fuck the most. Like, I'll never forget the moment when uh, the picture of the Beyond guys was oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Sony press conference. Like, that was fucking magic. You know, that was like yeah. fucking cool, man. And like, um, that's the only time in my life I remember blushing. Oh, really? Yeah, because like I, they had, they had called us ahead of time or text me ahead of time like the day before like hey do you care if we use that photo of you guys in shoe I'm like no and I thought it would be like briefly mentioned yeah. it was like fully featured right behind him and the way I didn't tell anybody at IGN except like the immediate yeah. Beyond crew and so the way the war reacted I remember blushing because everybody flipped out yeah. about it I mean that was fucking cool and like just when games are announced or like when big moments happen and at E3 there's always like at least one a year of something that happens that makes everyone go oh fuck like you yeah. give something like Killer Instinct's coming back. Oh shit, that's cool. You yeah, know, and yeah. people like even if people don't give a fuck when it actually comes out, mm -hmm. that moment of it being announced is special. Right. And like, man, E3. It's just it's fucking great. Today, Jeff Keighley announced that he's hosting the YouTube, YouTube one. like E3 stream or whatever. And that's fucking exciting. And they, they released this trailer that I put on my Twitter. I don't know if you guys can find it at some point. This might be way too late for that. But look for it. It's the Jeff Keighley E3 trailer for YouTube. And um it was just fucking epic. There's just epic music playing. It's kind of like a history of E3, and he's just like giving this speech about like why E3 is important. It's like it's the Super Bowl for gaming, and like you get to see all the different people competing, and it's just showing all these moments from E3's history. And I'm just like, man, like we've been in this a long time. Like yeah. a lot of things have happened, and it's like mm -hmm. to see Miyamoto go on the stage, and like E3 creates these characters out of these business guys. Sure, you know, and it's like you know Nintendo obviously has Reggie and stuff. We got Shu. We got like. Microsoft guy number one, number two, number three, whatever that is. Come yeah. on. But you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I know you, what you mean. even if you don't know their names, when you see these guys, you're like, oh, that guy's back. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, or it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I remember when he did that stupid thing, or like, oh, this guy makes good announcements. Like, it's a really special time where it's like a weird family reunion every year yep. mm -hmm. where you see these people and then you keep seeing them year after year. And it's like some guys move to different companies and yeah. stuff, but it's like, it makes you care about things that. I think the normal people don't care about. To us, these are people we work with all the time or yeah. like, you know, know of. But like I remember not working at IGN, not giving a fuck about like the actual people talking, but then realizing maybe I kinda do. And that's kinda cool to me. Well also no. nobody beats Jack Tratton. Jack Tratton was the best. Nobody. He was the best in the biz. Yeah, he was, he was, he was his biz. delivery was great. I mean, again, like I the thing about it being the Super Bowl for gamers is it's true, but it's like as if the end of the game happened in the beginning. Right. And that's and that's like the, and that's <laughs> kind of true. like, you know what I mean? That's kind of the issue, like in terms because I really do love the press conferences. I really do. I don't care who's so, talking or what they're saying. It's just like this is the announcements are tangible because one of the one of the things that about E3 that bothered me is I really don't like writing previews. Like it's the least favorite thing that I had ever ever do. And I don't really need to play games early either. Like I don't get I don't get off on that. Yeah, like, I'm with you on that. Like, like it's just it's not really necessary for me unless it's like I I remember playing Mega Man Nine for the first time in E3 and that was really awesome and I was excited about that or Fallout Three. But these games are like few and far between where I'm like I really need to play this right now, you know? Because usually the games are not ready. They mm -hmm. they feel and play and and look different. It's by the just time a you normal thing of like I'm playing 15 minutes, three hours in that I'm gonna have to replay again when it comes out exactly, anyway. Yeah. And it's spoiling this, that, and the other. So it's like once also, I know you it when when the world around you is hyper colored and you're hearing this <laughs> oz, 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 and you're just like. And you fought through a sea of sweaty people, and I don't give a shit how clean you are. By day two of E3, you're not clean anymore. You're hot, you're and disgusting, you're especially hot if you're disgusting. carrying a bag. You get there, you, um, you're late. You're frantic about being late. You have no idea where to go because you go to the one check-in desk, but there's three That's others the around this giant press check -in thing. Desk. You're not international press. You're, you're U.S. press. You got to go to that person. Candy's not here. Sorry, I don't know who to talk to you about. Candy, uh, I don't know. You're always like this. I'm here to see Phil. And they're like, oh, you mean candy? You're like, I don't. They're like, they're always. There's always someone that like that person that really knows what's going on just stepped away for a mm. second. This person that was hired as staff three days ago and they just gave the shirt to that looks official is always like this. I don't. And they have a. They always have a clipboard that they that's like within arm's reach. And they're like, I don't see. I don't. Is there? Is there Phil? Do you know Phil? Can you go get Phil? I don't know who Phil is. And then they just look at you and you look at them and you're like. And if Phil doesn't immediately come back into your eyesight, you're just fucked. Yeah. You're just fucked. Yeah, you it's a it's a weird it's definitely a weird experience. I, I think that 
one of the things I was confused about this year was the hype of like getting like prosumers getting in, and I'm like, dude, like to be perfectly honest with you, half the people at E3 are just not doing anything. Like it's it's no it's no different than usual. You know what I mean? Like E3 would actually be way more manageable if it literally was an industry show because there would be because. Oh, there's awesome. not that many people in the industry. The like, year like, that like, it, the year that it was an industry show when they when they decided to scale it back was really like with the exception of having to drive to every place. I thought that was a lot more. You talking about Santa Monica year? It that's like it was that's infamous that year. It wasn't great, but it was a lot more like when you stepped onto the show floor, you're like, oh, I can literally walk to any single game I want to play right now. Because well, that it was, was the not year a ton after Sun, after the year after Santa Monica, they came back to the convention center and had it on lockdown in terms of who could be there. Maybe and I remember the walking thinking. around that year not being bad, but it also wasn't the same. Yeah, well, that was the year they also like were like no booth babes, any of that stuff. Remember that that yeah. outlawed booth famous. Isn't that, that still? Was, that was the other broke the my case heart. There was yeah, no there, there, I think no there, there are no booth babes. Have, they have girls that well, walk they around. Well, that was the year that they yeah. started it though. The booth babes. Yeah, no, no booth babes. Started, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, that's the thing. I I I've always known it was not necessarily. They call it an industry show. It's not an industry show. There's a lot of people there that it just kind of somehow figured out to get in, and they're more fans than they are industry. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing because kudos to them. They yeah, figured it out. Absolutely, I'm not mad about it. But I remember the first year. I it was like two years ago. I walked around with Greg, and I remember I'm like, oh shit, this is a nice reminder that this actually isn't that big of an industry show because you couldn't walk five feet without someone wanting to take a picture of you. And like when you go to an industry event, that doesn't happen. Sure. Right. You're not, you're getting people who know you, they work with you as a professional. They see you in a different light. Whereas when you walk in the show and 40 people want to like get near you, I'm like, okay, this is more like MomoCon. Than I don't know like, about that. I think that, I mean, they are industry people. They're just on a different level of industry. Like they're on the blog level and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's I don't think I'm... it's as easy to get in as you guys are making it out. No, I, I mean, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I, I always got in with IGN every year. This is the first year I'm going with someone else. But I know plenty of people that are like, I just put in my blog and well, like, yeah, they're not really But they checking. have a blog though. I mean, yeah, that's exactly. the thing. It's like the, the, it does but require, it, but it's it, not, you can't sure. just go. But, sure. but, but it's not, and again, I don't care who goes. I mean, go if you want, if you can get in, get in. But that's I'm it. saying it's not a blog like Kotaku. Mm-hmm. It's like a blog yeah, well, that no one reads. Your GSC page. Yeah, you, you don't like, have to need a blog. Yeah, I thought you could work for a retail outlet and still get into. Yeah, you can. But even then, there's, a, there's a lot of limits. It's not just as simple as going. It's like each. And I want to quote this because I'm not sure, but like sure. Best Buy locations, I think that two people per location get to go or yeah, something. Yeah, but think like about that. that. Yeah, I know, I know. How many but it's Best like, Buys are there? That's like another two thousand people that are going to that show that like aren't necessarily on the in the industry. But I mean, I, we're talking Best Buys in the. That area, sure. People aren't gonna fly out. Well, I mean, some well, people, people would. Yeah, you know, some people would. But I mean, it's like uh, the point spots. is, it's not game just stops. they're not just letting anyone in. And it's like it, even if you want to go, like you do need to kind of you need to prove yourself in some way. I, that I'll you tell can, you this though, I bet it would be probably easier to get into E3 than Comic Con. No, dude, if you can't get a ticket to Comic Con, you're not you're not going. Like that lottery system's absurd. The way they you have to sign up for Comic Con these days, and then like you have to like buy a vial and put your blood in, and it has to check that maybe you have the vampire strain. There's like all sorts of weird shit you gotta do to get into Comic Con these days. Well, I, I get that. that I still think pass. it's easier to get into Comic Con because it, it's I, I, publicly sold. Yeah, but then mm. they sell out in like a day. But are we? Yeah, still, I know. So you're like, talking about as an industry, it's easier to get get. Well, into. I'm talking about if I wanted to go to Comic Con right now, yeah. three weeks out. Sure, it would be. It's in, like it's, I'm not getting a ticket. It's impossible. I have to buy it on the black market. Well, yeah, but you could do that. You can't buy an E3 ticket. I don't know. I bet you. You probably could, but you shouldn't be selling those because then that's a quick way to get blackballed by everybody. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, but they like check ID and like with E3 they check ID against the thing. And it's like, yeah, you could get in for some of the days, and <laughs> that's but my then favorite. Once thing. you get caught, then you're fucked. That's my favorite thing though is that we get our passes and then they and then they like there'll be a door where guys like the people are getting in fake passes or whatever, and so they they like one guy is checking ID and you just go to the door like right next to him. Just walking. Yeah, like that's how that's how secure it is. You like, see it and you just keep walking until you see someone not but checking no, ID. But nonetheless, I mean, to wrap it up. In a succinct way, if you're ready to wrap it up, Tim, is I, I, yeah. I mean, my kind of closing argument is that this year authentically is the first year I'm like really, really excited to go again because we just get to experience it now in a different way, in a way that I think Greg maybe experienced it a little more than I was able to experience it until maybe a couple of years ago, where like I still was really in the trenches and I was still in the shit when I was mm-hmm. at E3, man, and mm-hmm. it's and it's really, really a rough show. So yeah, like I get, I get it, and I understand how fucking annoying it is to hear that from someone. Like I've been in 93s and I don't ever want to go again, like kind of thing. But it's like. It's just trust me, I'm not lying. Like that's just been my experience. If other people have different experiences, that's that's great. But I'm telling you, the people in the industry I know, no, no yeah, no, no, no. Like, I like the, the the way people just faces gloss over by yeah. the time it's June. They're like, oh, because you know what you're getting yourself into. The it's mountain, not. It's the not. It's in never. Front of you. It's never manageable. You never do everything you need to do. You don't hit everything you need to hit, and it and it's troublesome. And and as someone who just doesn't care for previewing games and doesn't care for playing games early, because I just look at a game like when I see a game and I'm like, oh, that looks good. 
Um, like Witcher 3, when I saw mm-hmm. Witcher 3 like years ago. And I was like, oh, that looks really fun. I didn't, I never looked at it again ever until we played it yeah. in like March. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, I'm just going to play it when it gets here. Yeah. You know? Same thing with like Batman, like Arkham Knight. Like that game looks great. I'm like, I don't even know anything about it. And it's yeah, kind I of fun going into it. Like. I haven't played Arkham Knight because it's like, that's where it especially gets in weird when you wait a long time to play a sequel. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh, you already know looks, how it's going to be. That looks different, though. It, Arkham Knight looks freaking awesome. Well, yeah, so do the last three <laughs> Batman games. I'm ready to play them. I'm not ready to fucking play, play 10 minutes of do them. Do we know if it's going to be playable on the show floor? It'll be like. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be it'll a week, week out. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My biggest thing for playing the games, I don't like previewing games either just because it's like, it seems like a waste, but I just want to know if things feel right. And that's usually for like reboots or like when things come back. It's like I remember when the Tony Hawk um, HD whatever was announced. I was like, I need to play it. And then I just to know if it felt right, and it didn't. And I was like, well, fuck, that sucks, you know. Or like Smash Bros. It's like I want to play it. I want to know how the physics feel. Mm-hmm. And like it's stuff like that that sure. I think really. Or but then I'm done. It's like all right, Smash Bros. is, is the one exception though. That's an exception. Because we fucking played a shit ton. Yeah, of we just kept going back. That was fun. <laughs> but see, you're also it. It does depend on your your sort of uh, mentality toward it. Like I'm with I'm more with Colin where I. <laughs> I don't like the hype as much as the payoff of actually having the thing in my hands, like in my living room or in, you know, put it in, put it in, in terms of things that I like. I don't like seeing a thousand trailers for a movie. I would just rather be like, oh, the movie's coming out. Cool. Radio silence till I go and see it. Right. And so there's, there's just, it just depends on who you are. Like you have the kind of mindset where you're like, you want to know everything about everything right now. And you want to know it before anyone else does. And you just like that. That's that's like a hobby of yours. I don't care. I don't. If I have to wait in line for three hours, like right now, if someone said, "Hey, you could go see, uh, you could see a special sneak preview of Batman v Superman right now," but you have to wait eight hours in line, I'd be like, "Meh, no thanks." Entire movie? Yeah, I'd go. I wouldn't wait. I don't think I would. Why? Zach's not. If you're listening, the I'll entire wait. Entire movie? Yeah. If someone's like, you, you wouldn't wait eight hours. To eight see hours the entire in line. Movie. You have to stand in line for eight yeah. hours. Yeah. I don't think I would. Got that Vita? You're crazy. Got my bottle. I just, I just don't think anything's that good. That like I yeah, would I'm need to with see you on it. that. Where it's like, like nothing's that good. Like Your time's important. I would rather go see it in a theater with with pot, like relaxed and on my time schedule. You know, and same with games. Like you're, yeah. it's not yeah, a pleasant experience. It's not. And like just because I get to see it, like what's the point of experiencing when you're drained after like going through a freaking war? You know, which the I mean, it is. Sitting I mean, in a line. <laughs> No, it's not that. I think like, it's apples at, and at oranges, E3, the Batman E3 comparison. Well, here's the thing. You're up till 4 o'clock in the morning writing, right? And then the next day you got to get up at 7 o'clock to keep writing. And there's never a sense of finish. You're never done. There's always something you could be doing. It's traumatizing. It's stupid. It's dumb. It is, tra- like, it is a little traumatizing. And no one helps you prioritize ever because let, I'm not ta- I don't want to go out on a tangent. <laughs> but like – the methodology is always like get as much as you can done like get cover as much as you possibly can like talk about as much as everything you're supposed to talk about and it's like it's just a it's a it's a stressful set of circumstances and you're supposed to go sit and enjoy something that's that's let's not forget these are supposed to be enjoyed like these games and it's just not a, it's not an environment that i find conducive so my brain immediately just turns off I'm like i don't want to fucking deal with that i'd rather wait six months and when the experience comes to me i will enjoy it if it is enjoyable e3 is awesome some of my best memories are in that war room, two in the morning, surrounded by people who sleep deprived and stupid. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Colin. I kind of got to poop, so I'm going to go do that now. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I never take the bathroom breaks. I kind of got to poop. Don't, make, don't get mad at me. I'm not mad at you. I'm, I'm proud that you finally joined the ranks. 